Hello, welcome to the Tuesday, April 3rd, 2018 edition of the Sands and Red Storm Series Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Orlando, Florida. DDA over the last few days has been talking about phishing PDFs that distinguished themselves by actually embedding multiple links to various phishing sites. Now, according to DDA, the likely problem here was that the attacker actually intended to modify all the URLs, but didn't actually catch all the URLs that were embedded in this PDF. So in other words, it was likely a malfunction of the tool used to create these PDFs. Well, if you do dynamic analysis on a PDF like this, you're probably not going to find those additional static URLs similar to what the attacker didn't spot, but using static analysis by just extracting URLs from the PDF, well, you will get them all. And the advantage here is that you not only get the URLs that are changing with each version of the PDF, but in addition, you also get the static ones. So now if you do have some kind of block list of URLs that you don't allow, this approach is going to work better for you because you're more likely going to find some of these URLs in the PDF document. And as usual, Didier does have a nice walkthrough using some of his famous Python scripts in order to extract these URLs. Cryptojacking, of course, doesn't go away. And one way how cryptojacking was done was by uploading extensions into the Chrome Web Store that mined crypto coins in the browser. Now, Google did put some restrictions around these extensions. You were only allowed to upload an extension that did crypto coin mining if you informed the user about what happened. Well, apparently, 90% of the extensions uploaded to the Chrome Web Store did not comply with this requirement. The result is now that no extensions that do crypto coin mining will be accepted at all. Existing extensions that are already listed in the Chrome Web Store will remain until June, at which point they will be removed. This only affects mining extensions, other Bitcoin or blockchain or cryptocurrency related extensions will be allowed as long as they don't mine. Security company Cyber Reason found a fake Kaspersky antivirus malware that actually is interesting in so far in that it is written in auto hotkey. AutoHotkey is a scripting language, a little bit like AutoIT, but the reason it was sort of invented is that AutoIT did not allow you sort of to define keyboard macros. So AutoHotkey allows you to define keystrokes, uh, keyboard macros that then launch scripts. And well, just like AutoIT, it is a very full featured scripting language. So no reason why tools like Malware shouldn't really take advantage of it. And of course it does compile into an executable. Now, this particular piece of malware that Cyber Reason called Fox Persky, based on the impersonation of Kaspersky, does steal credentials. It also has a number of different persistent mechanisms. For example, it will copy itself to any attached removable devices, so it has the potential to spread via USB drives. Haven't really heard much about sort of that entire fake uh, anti-malware in quite a while. A few years ago, that was really sort of how malware spread. I don't think this particular sample necessarily advertises itself via web ads like some of the old fake antivirus did. And then we got more bad news for users relying on VPNs to assure anonymity. One problem here is modern browsers that implement WebRTC. WebRTC allows browsers to do real-time video and voice connections, essentially voice over IP, video over IP in the browser. And in order to do this, well, they implement the protocols like, for example, Estan and ICE, which in part are leaking internal IP addresses. 
Now, this has been known for a while, but Wojtek now did a pretty exhaustive test of various VPNs. He looked at a hundred different VPNs and proxy providers and found that 19 of them, so about 17% according to him, are leaking the user's IP. Best bet for you is probably to turn off WebRPC in your browser if you can do so. This feature is somewhat problematic, but of course then you will lose the ability to do direct video conferencing or voice over IP in your browser. And then we do have a winner for our March contest for the Raspberry Pi. It's Peter, so congratulations. And this is it for today. Thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.